As part of the CME program this year, we had a Caribbean-wide sargassum tracking component into this capacity development uh, project. So what we did, uh, it was we greatly focused on improving the 3D hydrodynamic and NEMO model, and this was some results yesterday, and you will see also more focus uh, results tomorrow. So we focus on improving the sea surface temperature bias of this model and run the model for a long period. So we were aiming for 10 years, but currently we have from 2010 to 2017. Uh, we wanted to come all the way to 2020 at least. Um, and we include the rivers, which uh, we are still working on it because there has been some difficulties. And we currently only have 2010 with rivers. Another point was to introduce particle tracking uh, to this circulation model. So we did that for parcel in health trends, and I'm still working on the open drip bit testing. Um, and when we select a satellite product uh, to use, uh, which is this um, from the Sarcasm Watch system, I showed you. And then we create particle tracking capacity building tools from which we will have a demo today. So basically is Google Colab Python notebooks. These things, well, Google Colab is sort of an app or a web page that just let you run Python code online. So basically Google lends you some computing capacity. And it's really great because a lot of things are already installed there and they are compatible among themselves and other things you can just quickly install on the go. So basically I choose this platform because I don't need you to install anything on your computer. I just share you this link and you can run it. So I did two little notebooks for you. One that generates the seating location from the satellite product um, from the Sargasso web system. And another one to visualize generic particle trajectories, which we'll be playing with today. Uh, the one for generating locations, the objective of that is was to generate the starting locations and, and then you will do particle tracking. But this particle tracking, um, I haven't been able to make it run online. So this pending point, um, it was to use parcels online, which I'm still unsure whether it will work or not. So instead, I think I maybe trade you this for a brief instruction manual on how to do this on your laptop, and I will be disseminating this soon after the end of the workshop. Um, so um, how do you do this, the Caribbean white sargassum tracking? So you go to this website of the sargassum watch, and then you choose this in their satellite data products, which is Caribbean and then East Caribbean. And you will have a menu like this. So here you can choose the date uh, of the image you are interested on. In. And then you will click on this one, AFI. So this algal floating index. So while well, you located the specific figure that you want, hmm, for example, it can be, yesterday or it can be years ago, then you graph uh, that link to that image. And then in, the, in this collab notebook that uh, is called Caribe Sargasson Location, uh, and this is the link, you will replace the address for that image here. And then that's all you need to do. And then you run the thing. And the thing will output you locations that overlap with the Caribbean Nemo model. So basically you just go through the notebook running all of the cells. And in the end, you will get this text file that you can download. So what this script is doing, it grabs the image that you tell it and it georeferences it and it saves it again in a GOT. So now it's a georeference image. And then what also does, it loads in the Caribbean Nemo model domain and then identifies the locations that have loads of sargassum 
in that image and that are inside of the NEMO domain. This loads, uh, you can play around with that and decide what is your threshold uh, that you want to use to release particles there, whether there was lots of or little sargassum, you can decide that. And then it saves for you those locations. So then you can download that file and run it in parcels in your computer. I have the script that does that, but it doesn't work online. But I can just share it with you. And if you want to install parcels, it's pretty easy, uh, but it does require Miniconda or Anaconda. And there's very clear instructions uh, in the website. Uh, if you already use Python, then it's just creating a new environment for parcels and then you can run this particle project. So because we're not doing that, I will show you some preliminary results. So I grabbed the image for September 1st, 2014. And then it's about this area that overlaps with the NEMO model. So I initialized particles there and I tracked them for six months. Um, so here we have the trajectory and we can see, um, I choose 2014 because 2015 was a very strong um, sargassum year. So then you can see um, the I color coded the trajectories by month. Uh, so I released them in September, but this in yellow you see the trajectory during October, in cyan during November, in green during December, and in January in blue, and February in pink, March 2015 in black. So you can see how in these six months, particles reach the Gulf of Mexico. Some of them stay trapped in loops, at least in the Caribbean. But you can see how um, by February and March, you had lots of them reaching the Mesoamerican barrier reef. We have Cozumel Island there. Um, so then the idea is that this tracking, we need to see how well it's performing against uh, satellite observation uh, from a future date, like we have February 15 here in the site. And you can see that there is sargassum um, there in, in Central American coast, uh, but you don't see so much on the top. And this is likely because I released very few particles in, in this one. So there is some of the preliminary results. And then I have this accidental experiment. Well, it's sort of accidental. I just, I was interested on this date. I told you because it was strong, it was leading to a strong sarcasm here in 2015. And I didn't yet have the velocity fields uh, for 2014. So I ran it just to test uh, with the velocity field of January 2010. And you can see that uh, on the right, and you can see the trajectory is there, and you can see that uh, after six and seven months, there is um, some tracks that come close uh, to the Belize and Mexican coast, but they are not like super close, like to beach in, in Cozumel. So it is a matter of being at the right time and at the right place uh, for sarcasm. Of course, if there is a great amount of it, your likelihood of having it beaching on your shores increased greatly, but it's basically the ocean currents that will doom you or make you steer clear away of the sargassum issue. So maybe I'm just restating the obvious. There is a lot of seasonal and interannual variability in the currents and that drives um, these trajectories of sargassum. And we saw some of this uh, eternal variability um, yesterday on, on the presentations of the general NEMA model results. And then the follow on with this is that thing, but we have somebody that will keep working at it. We have a PhD student, Sophie Durston whose dissertation topic is causes and solutions for the Great Atlantic Sargassum Belt. And she started last year and she, her program will run until 2024. So she's gonna do an in-depth study of modeling and earth observations for Sargassum. And we are hoping that she will pick up these tools that we developed during the CME program 
and then include some more sargassum processes like wind edge and wave effects and sargassum behavior and do a probabilistic proper analysis of the particle trajectories and also validate against satellites. So what we are going to do is have a go at playing with this visualization tool for trajectories in the Caribbean. What I did for this is I run more than two and a half million particles per release uniformly sitting everywhere in this area you see here. Oh, I'm sorry the lat long is so tiny small. But as I say, uh, and you already have your location of your interest. So anything within this box, we can play with. Um, so these are surface particles. Um, I track using parcels and they are forced by 25 hourly mean velocity fields from the Nemo Caribbean model. And this is for an average year. So 2010 to 2016. So you have to be mindful that there has been a lot of average into this um, average year, 25 hours velocity fields. So this is really just a tool. Uh, in the end, this mini year is no year. Okay, so it doesn't really happen. It's mean conditions. Uh, don't ever happen in the ocean. And what I did is also I tracked them forward and backward in time for one month. Um, and I did seasonal releases. So for this month specifically. So this is what you can choose. Um, so for the forward run, I did April, July, October. I did January, but for some reason it doesn't work. So I'm trying. Uh, and I did a backward run a releasing in February, May, August, and November. So this is what you have to choose from. And I made you a Google, Google Colab notebook that you have in the chat and you can click and go there. It's called copy of particle visualizations dot Python notebook. So you can click on that link and then you can save your own copy to make modifications. So it will open in your browser and you go to file and save a copy in my drive and that will save you your copy. In your Google Drive, um, I, I assume you must have a Google Drive, right? Um, I assume you do, sorry. If you don't, you just need to get a Google account, like a Gmail account or, or whatever Google will give you an account. Um, so then in that thing, when you load it, you have some options that you can, this is just plain code. It can include like markdown text nicely it doesn't currently have any of that it's a pure python node um so what you need to do is just to run sequentially each of the cells and this little play bot that they have and you have make your choices uh, when you see the comment hashtag 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 user input hashtag makes anything hashtag is the commenting uh key, key character for python so anything that has a hashtag um it's not run, it's the comment for you just to know what it's doing. So when you see this user input, you will have three choices. Whether you want to visualize something that was a fourth war run, meaning you release at that month in that location of your choosing, and then you track the particles where they will go. Or you can choose a backward run. So that location, and that month where things came to that location, okay? So for sargassum arrival, you may be thinking, oh, I had a great amount of sargassum that month. So you choose that and you see where things came from. That's what your visualization will show. For the forward uh, tracking, you can think of if you have an outflow, say a river, oh, well, that debris that is carried in my river will go. If you know you have a beach with a lot of plastic pollution, um, you can do the forward tracking and you see, oh, where that plastic may go. 
So then the other thing you can choose is your arrival or departure month, depending. And you have to choose the months that I specified there because if you choose anything else, it will not work. You only have what I have previously run, I upload uh, into my public FTP, and then this notebook is creating that data. That's why I ask you for the short break because in the reading that data, it takes a couple of minutes, three to five or 10 minutes uh, to load that data. Uh, into Google Colab. This Google Colab thing, what it's doing is that Google is lending you some computer capability on the cloud. And the issue with that is to get the big data sets into it. That can take time. And the last thing you can choose is your release location. So this is the location and I ask you to think about and find the latitude and longitude in decimal degrees. So you input it there and then you will get uh, your visualization. So here you have it. Uh, it's open, in my case, in a Firefox browser. So you can see it, I think. Um, you can see this one uh, if you have gone to the link. And you can, I think, play it. Uh, but if you want to pay modification, it's not going to let you. So you go to file and save your own copy. And then it will, it will just open you again. And it's going to say copy of copy. <laughs> because it's already a copy of mine. Uh, and here you can just click on it and change and name it whatever you want. So you can delete the copy. The copy of copy, you can delete it or whatever. And you just click out and it automatically saves the changes all the time because it's an online thing. So the notebook, I'm going to take you through, but I already run it. So I will not run all the steps again. So the first part is just installing some libraries that are not already there um, in Collab. So these libraries in Python are just like toolboxes uh, in MATLAB or other things. So it just give you some functions. Um, so you click run and it will run that in a few seconds. And we are installing Cartopy and NetCDF4. And then this thing of the compatibility or incompatibility that's supposed to be solved in this platform. Well, sometimes it doesn't. So in this case, I have to uninstall and install Shapely again. And I will rerun this one because it has a little trick that because you are uninstalling, it asks you whether you want to proceed. So when you run that one, you have to click there and put Y, yes. Otherwise it will be stuck forever, okay? So you just put the Y, press enter, and then it will keep going. Um, and eventually successfully uninstall and then install again, a different non-binary version of Shapely which uh, happily works with Cartopy. You have to have all your libraries be um, uh, compatible to work together. So then when you have those libraries, then you can import them or import certain functions of them. That's what the cell is doing. And then we have the interactive um, cells. So all of these that say user input here, you choose uh, whether you want to have the backward trajectories or forward trajectories uh, display. And you just comment or uncomment here. As I say, the hashtag is comment. So everything that has the hashtag, it becomes green. And it means um, it's just letters. It's not being run as code. So here, because I was still thinking of the sarcasm case, I choose backward. And then I say, well, August, because August is late summer. It's when we usually have lots of sarcasm arriving in the Caribbean. And then I, you have your location to choose. So here, I think I chose the west coast of San Lucia, because then suddenly I was thinking about the larval dispersal anyway. Um, and this is my point there. So you can change to whatever you want here. Uh, don't forget we are west, so your longitude should be negative. Um, if you already have your copy, you can go ahead and, and change there to your own location. Or maybe in a minute you can tell out your location because I can't see the chat from here. Somebody already running into trouble with it. Gosh. <laughs> well, watch and then we can debug. Uh, if it doesn't work for you. And this is the part where it's pointing um, to my FTP and grabbing the data. So it grabs um, a direction and the months that you selected, and it grabs um, 
those trajectories and it loads them. And this is the one that takes a while. So I'm not gonna run it again. But last time I ran it, it only took 93 seconds. So it's not too bad, but it really depends. Uh, so this is the metadata of the NCDF. You can comment this if you don't want to see it. Um, this last thing, but I leave it there to know that the data actually load incorrectly. And then it just access some variables from that particle file and find the starting locations. And then it grabs your locations and find particles that were released within a 10 kilometer radius of your chosen location. You can change if you want, if you want to see more particles, just make it something bigger. This is 10 kilometers in degree units. And then, then based on your location, it selects an area to zoom in, and then it plots you the thingy. Um, so it will look like this. Um, so I choose my location is this red star, so it's super coastal. And then all those blue dots are the tracks uh, of particles that arrive to that location in August. So it plots blue if you are running backwards. So it is was thinking if it comes from the ocean is blue. And then if you are using um, the um, forward, uh, it will track, it will plot you in green. So what comes from land out is green, but you also have uh, your title here. If you play with it a lot, you will certainly get confused. So just a little there. Um, okay, so, Somebody wants to, oh, great, Abby, you solved it already. I was just looking at how to help you. Um, looking at Abby in the chat. Um, great. So are you all playing and finding your own location? Do you want um, to gel out a location and I will run it for you here? Skalak, okay, Laura, where is it? We need the lat loan. Don't I look for it, I look for it. Escalac, Quintana Roo, Mexico. I'm looking into Google Maps. You cannot see my other windows. So I'm just gonna drop a point um, with my Google Maps. There's something here called La Posa. Is that near you? So we need a point. And as long as it's water in the Caribbean model, it should go. Um, I click there. So 18.25 and minus 87.6. So that sounds good. Um, let's see. 18, latitude 18. Point 25, I have no memory. And uh, 87.69. Okay, so I run for somewhere near Skalak in the coast of Mexico. So yeah, and then I have to run everything else, but the data loading, no. And then this area, and then Skalak, which is it? Ta -da. So see, in this location, you have things coming in in one month. Um, you can have all these trajectories from the coast of um, is this uh, uh, my geography is terrible, Nicaragua, Honduras. This is Honduras, right? So from the coast of Honduras, you can get stuff coming in to you in Escalac. So that's the trajectories within a month. Um, so any sargassum that you see out here um, in, in July, then it will arrive to you in August. That's what we have modeled here and that's what you can visualize. 